Shalom. Kahlaimla Yahawa. Bahashim. Yahweh Shai. Bahashim. Or Kwakadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior. Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and to the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you in another lesson, salvation to the Jew first, and then to the Gentiles. So I want to go into this and cover a few scriptures. The Most High does everything in order. Everything. <laughs> so the building of this house starts with the chief cornerstone, the rock of our salvation, which is Yahushai. And then Judah is built upon that cornerstone. So you have the house of David that is comprised of all tribes. But Judah is at the top of that pyramid, which is Yahawashai, followed by the literal tribe of Judah, followed by the other tribes. But even in the northern kingdom, Ephraim is the chief of the northern kingdom. So that's the order even beginning to build the northern kingdom, starts with Ephraim, the chief. <clears throat> Let's go here. 1 Corinthians 14. We go 1 Corinthians chapter 14. <clears throat> Let's go to verse 33. For God is not the author of, of confusion, but of peace. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. See? So he is the author of order. Let's go down to the bottom. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 40, let all things be done decently and in order. So imagine salvation trying to be rebuilt without Yahawashai first coming and shedding his blood on the altar, dying for the sins of Israel. There is no salvation or redemption without our sacrificial lamb without the chief cornerstone being laid in the building towards the Most High's kingdom to come. So that order starts with Yahawashai, starts with Judah, the house of David, and the remnant that's going to come under the order of the new governing authority under the tabernacle of David, in which Yahawashai will occupy that throne. <clears throat> Let's read this one. We're going to go to John 12. The book of John, chapter 12, verse 20. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. And this feast is the feast of Passover. But I want to read in context. Let's go up. <clears throat> Who is this talking about? Let's go up. Let's read verse 9. I think that's where it's at. <clears throat> right here, 11. Because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believe on Yahweh Shai. Now let's get it in verse 9. So the, these Greeks were Hellenized or Hellenistas. 
they knew that they were Israelites speaking the Greek language or tongue. Let's read verse 9, John 12, verse 9. Much people of the Jews, therefore, knew that he was there, and they came not for Yahweh's sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. And this is also spiritual because the Israelites were dead and are being resurrected through the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai, our sacrificial lamb. So these are Jews that we're reading about. Now let's go to John 12 and 20. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. See what he's, let's go into this word Greek first. <clears throat> Greeks. See, Helen comes from the Greek. Strong's G, 1672, Helene. Helene. Inhabitant of Hellas. Greek speaking person. Now here it goes off. But they were called Gentiles, pursuant to Ephesians 2 and 11. 1 Corinthians 12 and 2. Let's keep going. So who can worship at the Passover? Is the question to ask here. Who can worship at the Passover? Let's go to Exodus 12. <clears throat> Ordinance of the Passover. Exodus 12, verse 42. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. That's a cut to anybody trying to say that these are heathen or natural Gentiles. We're going to take our time. So these are Israelites that know they are Israelites, but they're speaking the Greek tongue. Heathens are not allowed to participate in Passover. They didn't get saved from Pharaoh under the clutches of Egypt. So this is for the heritage of the Israelites. Let's read it again. So John 12 and 20 is talking about Passover. So this is another destruction to the false doctrine out there that all nations are going to rule in the kingdom to come or get that salvation, that reward of the gift of eternal life and dominion. Let's go back to it. Go back to the law. Exodus 12, verse 42. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt, that this is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. And the, <clears throat> Exodus 12 and 43. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. Let's look up this word stranger. <clears throat> That's telling you right there in John 12 and 20, they're Israelites. Let's look up this word stranger, Exodus 12. 12, verse 43. <clears throat> Exodus 12 and 43. Look up the word stranger. Comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H, 5236. 
Nechor. Nechor. Look what I highlighted. Heathen. Foreigner. Heathen. Foreigner. Alien. So we just highlighted what it means. Heathen. <laughs> Let's keep going. Exodus 12 and 43 again. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. So how in the world can these be non-Israelites celebrating the Passover here in John 12 and 20? It does not fit. We must acquit. Let's go to Exodus 12 and 44. But every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. So Israelites can serve until the seventh year they're released. Let me see here. I think this is... um. <clears throat> Let's see here. I think it's Exodus 21. Exodus 21, verse 1. Now these are the judgments which thou shall set before them if thou buy a Hebrew servant six years he shall serve and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. See? So these are Israelites. <clears throat> Exodus 12, verse 43. But every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. Fortunately, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, I was circumcised at birth. Exodus 12 and 45. So we're supposed to be circumcised to participate in the Passover. Exodus 12 and 45. <coughs> a foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. It's clear. And in one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall ye break a bone thereof, because that sacrificial lamb is Yahawashai. So he is unblemished, unspotted, a perfect sacrifice. So this is not a, a luxury dinner, but eating in haste and a solemn assembly. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. We're going to read that again in Exodus 12 and 47. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee and will keep the Passover of the Lord, let all his males be circumcised and then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. So Israelites would travel from all the lands where they dwelt and visit Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. So our forefathers were sojourners traveling, and many of them would travel several days to get to Jerusalem. We're talking several days trips in most cases. So they would be sojourners because they were not resident in that land of Jerusalem. So they had to travel to celebrate the Passover. So there were certain laws that applied to those traveling outside of the motherland, Jerusalem, versus those that were residents nearby. 
Let's look, let's look at this word stranger. <clears throat> Exodus 12 and 48. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 12, verse 48, stranger, comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H, 1616. Gar. Gar. Sojourner. The form just below that, Geir. Geir. So these are Israelites. It's God, God, G-A-R, God. Let's see where that comes from. We're going to go to Exodus 18. Exodus 18, verse 1. When Jethro, the priest of Midian, when Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that the Most High had done for Moses and for Israel, his people, and that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. Another cut. So the Passover is for the Israelites. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back and her two sons, of which the name of the one was Gershom. For he said, I have been an alien in a strange land. So Moses' sons are Israelites, and Moses is a Levite, so his sons are. Let's look up this word, Gershom. Stranger or alien. Let's see. Gashem comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H, 1647. Gershom. Gershom. Foreigner. Firstborn son of Moses and Zipporah. Firstborn son of Levi. See? Gashem. So now we know where that term comes from. Let's go back to that. <clears throat> Exodus 12, verse 48. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised and then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. One law shall be to him that is home born and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. Thus did all the children of Israel, as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. So now we know who these Greeks are. Greek-speaking Jews. Let's go to Numbers 9. Numbers 9, verse 13. Let's go to 12. Wait, we got to go up. Numbers 9, who is this talking to? Numbers 9, verse 10. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you or your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body or be in a journey after off, yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. So he has to be cleansed. Let's go up to verse 7. No, nope, we read that. It's talking to the Israelites. That's the point. See, let's go down to verse 12. Numbers 9, verse 11. The 14th day of the second month 
at evening, they shall keep it and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herb. They shall have numbers nine and twelve. They shall leave none of it unto the morning, nor break any bone of it, according to all the ordinances of the Passover, they shall keep it. But the man that is clean and is not in a journey and forbeareth to keep the Passover, even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people because he brought not the offering of the Lord in the appointed season that man shall bear his sin. And a numbers nine and 14. And if a stranger shall sojourn among you and will keep the Passover unto the Lord according to the ordinance of the Passover and according to the manner thereof, so shall he do. Ye shall have one ordinance, both for the stranger and for him that is born in the land. Same thing we read, but just for a sanity check, we'll look up the word stranger. Come same word that Moses' sons was called. Comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H1616. Gar. Gar. And the form just below that, Geir, Geir. Guy. Many Israelites were sojourners, travelers, to keep the Passover. And many of them would go on several days journey. Let's read one more. <clears throat> Romans 1, verse 15. So as much as in so as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. So these are Israelites that are under the Roman district or jurisdiction. Romans 1, let's prove that. Well, let's prove that. See, Romans 1, verse 7. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord, Yehoshai, Hamashiach. Who are the saints? Go to Psalms. 148 and 14, I believe. I haven't been here in a while. <clears throat> yes. Psalms 148, verse 13. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. So the saints are the people of Israel and the horn of our salvation is Yahawashai. Go back to Romans 1 and 7. To all that be in Rome, beloved of the Most High, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Yahawashai, Mashiach. Now let's read Romans 1. And 13, now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I propose to come unto you, but was let here thereto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. 
But now we know called to be saints. So these are Greek speaking Jews. <clears throat> Greek speaking Jews. I see something here. Did I miss something? No, not this time. Romans 1, verse 13. Now I would not have you ignorant. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purpose to come unto you, but was let here thereto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. Paul said that he became all things to all men. So he's speaking to the Israelites that are scattered throughout different provinces. Romans 1 and 15. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Hamashiach, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. See? So these are Israelites. You had those in Jerusalem that knew they were Israelites. And we also had those Israelites that were cut off or that were lost their heritage, which happened under Antiochus. Let's get that. Let's go to Second Maccabees. Second Maccabees six. Let's go ahead and read it. Second Maccabees chapter six. Let's go to verse one. Not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of God. So this was done under the, the Greek captivity. And to pollute also the temple in Jerusalem and to call it the temple of Jupiter Olympius. And that in Goddessim of Jupiter, the defender of strangers as they did desire that dwelt in the place. The coming in of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people. For the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles, which dallied with harlots and had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places and besides that brought in things that were not lawful. So under the Greek captivity, they brought in barbarianism, paganism, idolatry, and other gross abominations. Not, let's go to verse five. The altar also was filled with profane things which the law forbade. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient fasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. See? So these are those primarily of the southern kingdom that became cut off from their heritage. Let's read verse six again. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. Let's 
jump down to verse yeah, seven. And in the day of the king's birth, every month, they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. And when the fast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manner of the Gentiles should be put to death. Then might a man have seen the present misery. So the Israelites took on the rituals, practices, ceremonial worships as the heathen and natural Gentile nations. And over time, <laughs> and because it was unlawful to profess themselves as Jews, over time were cut off from their heritage. But you still had Israelites that were Hellenized, Hellenistas or Hellenistas that knew they were Israelites. So hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Kwan Kadash, to the Jew first and then to the Gentiles. So the Lord is rebuilding his holy temple and raising up the tabernacles of David as in the days of old. <clears throat> Let's read this one. Zechariah 12, verse 7. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. So the building or the anchor of the tabernacle of David is built on the chief cornerstone, Yahweh Shai, which is a Judite. And we know that Judah woke up first, even here in the, the daughter of Babylon, America. And then the gospel was preached to those that did not know they were Israelites. So this is the rebuilding of the Lord's temple, in decency, and in order. Hopefully this has been an edifying lesson. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala in the Bad Babal. We got next, Lord willing. Barakatham. Shalom.